Hello, this is Teacher Ronald and I want to welcome all my viewers to this other segment of the analysis of Devil on the Cross as a novel. Uh, I want to thank so much the people that have subscribed to this channel. This means that every time there is a new video that has been posted, you are always updated. You receive a notification indicating that you've received a new video in this channel. I want to encourage all the people that are seeing this as our first video for them. Just subscribe so that next time you don't miss any video that we post in here. Uh, today we're going to look at themes and ideas. And previously I've looked at a number of things as far as character and characterization is concerned. I want to testify that we are done with character and character. All our videos are students if you have not watched the previous videos I want to encourage you to first of all look for them uh, watch them and then you will be following up with the rest of these other videos that will not be a challenge to you the very first video that we had was introduction to a level literature it is there and I want to encourage you that before you watch this one maybe you go back and look at introduction to a level literature this video introduces you to a level literature and also to the novel Devil on the Cross from there we had the second video which was looking at analysis of the title Devil on the Cross. It is also very important for you to follow that line. From there we had the third video which was talking about character and characterization. That was a beginning of the segment of character and characterization. In this video we only looked at Waringa Jacinta and that is because she carries more character traits that we have to discuss. But then we had the the fourth one, character and characterization, the second segment, and we're looking at Wangari and the other two characters like Imoturi and Gaturia. Then we went on and looked at another segment of character and characterization, that was the second last video, and was talking about other characters like Imoturi and others like Maura. And from there we have the very last segment of character and characterization. And this one talks about Nditika, Wanguji talks about Gitutu Wakatanguri, talks about the police, talks about the, uh, the, the, the European uh, delegates from uh, the cave. And this video, if you want to look at the police and uh, Fandika Kono, the ironical man who arrests people that have come to report the case, you are going to watch this video and I'm very sure you'll enjoy. After watching this, you will have finished a segment of character and characterization. And the next part that you will be left with is actually to look at the themes and ideas, or what we actually in literature call thematic analysis. For senior fives, it is very important for us to understand what we mean by a theme and an idea, and today we are going to explore that. Now, we're going to look at themes like corruption, exploitation, neocolonialism, elitism, resistance, revolution, and national liberation, the concept of socialism versus capitalism. But not only those, we have more other themes that we can look at. We have the theme of greed and materialism, injustice and oppression, hypocrisy and betrayal, fate and destiny, suffering, despair and disillusionment. I know with the time we shall see that maybe it is important for us to combine these two because one of them is actually the cause of the other. I hope you are tuned and we're going to just come back very soon. Okay, today we're looking at thematic analysis and we need to look at what we should achieve by the end of this video. In this video, you will be taken through a detailed analysis of the themes and the ideas in the novel Devon Across. You will also be reminded of what a theme is and how to track themes and ideas in the, uh, in the piece of writing. Now, in this case for the senior fives, it is very very important for us to look at this very objective that we have to know how we track but also to understand the difference between a theme and an idea. Reason being, some of us didn't do literature at all level, but we're doing it at A level. So it is important for us to understand the difference between the two, so that we can also follow up on this topic. And then you also have a sample questions that are always set around the topic. And maybe we're going to begin with sample questions. Sample question number one could be, 
explain the theme of greed and materialism in the novel. Love on the cross. That would be the first question. The other question would be explain any two concerns that Gujiwa Thiongo portrays in Devil on the Cross. The two concerns automatically they are talking about themes. The other one could be any question that they are going to mention the theme or the themes for you to explain. Please note carefully, unless you are going to do this for research at university, it is very hard for the teacher to tell you to explain the themes in Devil on the Cross because it would mean explaining all the themes they have time to mark that. So unless it is a coursework, that is going to be a very hard question. But they will specify at least two, at least three, at least any this number of themes that you can explain in Devil on the Cross so that you choose the ones that you understand better and explain them. So what is a theme anyway? And then what is an idea? This will benefit so much the senior fives people that are just joining A-level and are doing literature, Devil the Cross in particular. Good. A theme, according to Wikipedia, is a central topic or a subject or a message within a story. It can also mean an idea or a point that is central to a story, which can often be summed in a single word. For example, we can have the theme of love the theme of death, the theme of betrayal and hypocrisy. So when you're talking about the theme, when you read the story, anything that appears, that idea which appears, that topic which appears several times in the book is what you can call a theme. If you're reading a book, for example, let us say those of you who did literature at all level may have done betrayal in the city, and then you see betrayal happening after another incident. After every incident, there is some kind of betrayal portrayed. There, it means you have the theme of betrayal and hypocrisy in the book. If you have read Romeo and Juliet, you realize that almost in every aspect, every page you read, you will see some highlight of love. So the, the fact that love prevails more in the book, that means we can develop a theme of love from that book. So if there is a lot of maybe uh, a death in the book automatically are going to develop the theme of death. So a theme is simply the central idea, the central topic, the subject, the major point that is emphasized in the book. Simple. Okay. Now I want us to also understand that themes can be recorded in, 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 in a number of ways. But before that, we need to maybe build more about what themes can be. Teacher, does a book have only one theme? No, if you're looking at a novel, no person writes a novel and yields only one theme. Novels will have at least, at least four themes. So, if we're looking at Devil on the Cross, we're going to look at a number of things that are going to be happening that yield to particular themes. Therefore, a story can have a number of themes based on what the author wants to communicate. Now, themes are recorded in many pieces of writing when there is, number one, a conflict between an individual and a society. Sometimes, as individuals, conflict with the society. We don't want to do what society norms are, and as a result, we shall develop maybe the theme um, of, 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 of violence or maybe of rebellion because we are conflicting what society needs. Two, age. The difference between different age groups will also develop a particular theme, maybe generational gap. Then we have humans conflicting with the technology or modernity. If humans don't want to accept the modernity, there could be a theme. Then unchecked ambition or optimism or pessimism. Someone loses hope so much. Someone gains a lot of hope and begins doing dubious things. We can develop a theme from there. Okay. Then what is an idea? Oh God. An idea differs from a theme in a very, very thin line. If we didn't have themes and ideas in a book, 
some of us students could develop more than 100 themes in Devil on the Cross. Because everything that happens, some of us could have taken it as a theme. But because of that thin line between a theme and an idea, we are able to discuss ideas as ideas and themes as themes. So how does a theme differ from an idea? A theme will appear, just like we mentioned before, will appear several times in a book. Different characters will perform that thing severally and it will become a theme. Whereas an idea will appear once in a while. It may appear not more than twice in a novel like Devil on the Cross. And then a few characters will be performing it. Let us compare, for example, exploitation in Devil on the Cross and love. It is true we have love in the book Devil on the Cross. Why? We can see that the rich old man from Gorika has love for Waringa at the beginning, even when that love is actually illicit, it's very dirty, but he loves her and of course they evolve in sexual affair. And then we also have Gaturi and Waringa who love each other so much until the end when we cannot decide their fate because Waringa actually kills the parent of Gaturia. But then this theme or uh, this, I, this other aspect of love appears once in a while and it is much more of a conflict that every time it appears there is something hindering it from happening. It is not fulfilled. It appears just once in a while. For example, there are few characters that perform it, but the theme of exploitation is almost everywhere from the beginning of the book to the end. From the beginning, we shall see that people go through a lot of exploitation, sexual and also at work and even politically. So as a result, exploitation becomes a theme and then love becomes an idea. Teacher, will they ask me to explain the ideas in the book? No, they'll ask you to explain the themes. I hope we are there. We shall continue. So we're going to begin with the theme of corruption in the novel, Devil on the cross. We are beginning with this because it is one of the themes that really have a few things to talk about because most of the things are actual illustrations of other themes like exploitation, betrayal and hypocrisy and neocolonialism. Now, Nguji as a sensitive writer is worried about corruption fails in the Kenyan society, especially after independence. Nguji believes that capitalism is a systematic robbery of peasants and the workers. Capitalism, the concept of looking at, looking at and emphasizing that every person should have money, money should be the first thing to consider in life, is what he's calling capitalism. He's saying that this is a system of robbery and the robbery of peasants. Peasants are robbed of whatever that they have. As we continue, you will see that they will even be robbed of their own sweat and blood. So, first of all, what is corruption? Most of us, when we talk about corruption, what comes to your mind is someone has taken a bribe. Well, bribery and embezzlement are just part of corruption. Corruption is actually of any form of dishonesty. Dishonesty that is undertaken by an individual or an organization which has been entrusted with a position of authority or office. If they have given someone or an organization authority or an office, and then this group of people or this person performs some kind of dishonesty, that person is actually misusing the office and is misusing the role and therefore is corrupt. So, especially if this person uses that office or that opportunity to acquire illicit benefit or abuse the power for their own private gain, for their own selfish gain, for their own greedy uh, importance, that one is a corrupt person and therefore what they have involved in is a corrupt scenario. So corruption is generally the misuse of office, not only embezzlement and bribery. I hope this 
will, will be understood better when you're looking at general paper because it is a common topic. Okay, so this is a practice that is so prevalent in the novel, Devil on the Cross, and we have to look at it uh, in, in details. Now, uh, just like we have already introduced, uh, when we look at uh, the different aspects of the novel, Devil on the Cross, corruption is criticized in form of capitalism that Nguji hates most. He believes that it is the robbery that has been protected and sanctified by the large courts of law. When look at Warenga's case, for example, in Nairobi, hmm, he is, she is taken to courts uh, of law, but of course she is innocent. What they are choosing her of is being poor and jobless, and yet it is not her making. And when we look at Kimendere, who also wants to build churches and preach to masses that milking them is God-given. And then the armed forces, the police, and the education institutions are also going to be used by Kimendere as, as, as per his suggestions to make sure that these people are totally, uh, are totally taken up into aspects of thinking that it is okay for them to be milked. This kind of, of, um, of, of activities portray a lot of corruption and immorality of people. So we're not looking at the money. I hope you're getting that. So when you look at the novel, it really opens in a serious crash between the, 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 the reality of the society and what people want to make that society to be. We have a journey, of course, that we are involved in together as, as readers uh, with the, the, the five passengers and the one driver, that is Mwaura, uh, that as the driver, Mwereru uh, Mukirai as the man in the dark glasses, and we have uh, the man in the overall, that is Muturi, we have the man with the briefcase, that is Katuria. We have the man, in the, uh, the woman in 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 a, in a Chitenge, that is the Wangari, and then we have Waringa. So as we move, uh, we're going to Imorog. Of course, we have some kind of of a feast that we are supposed to attend. Whatever takes place in that taxi, you know, it is it is it is bitter somehow. But it also opens our minds. Then from there, we are opened to a kind of, of, of interlude where the, the master of ceremony is communicating, is talking about, uh, talking to, to, to the people about opening of the ceremony. This is what he says. I'm trying to trace the page. Okay. This is what he says. And now before I sit down, I shall call upon the leaders of foreign delegation from the International Organization Thieves and Robbers, whose headquarters are in New York, USA, to talk to you. I think, sorry, um, I think you all know that we have already applied to become full members of IOTR, that is International uh, Robbery uh, and Theft. They are visit to this delegation, thus the gifts and the crown they have brought makes the beginning of even more fruitful period of our cooperation. This is very funny though. Okay, I've been looking for the page for that quotation, but good enough, I think I've got it just down here. Okay, so this is what the Master of Ceremony portrays to us. They have joined the IOTR. This is simply the International Organization of uh, theft and robbery and we have the delegate uh, from from the, the European countries that is people from USA from France and other uh, 5G uh, countries now it is very important for us to look at why particularly these people and why particularly do they have to get the headquarters from USA this is going to be our next area of discussion but the seven Representatives from the uh, from the, the, the European countries and your colonial powers indulging in the most heinous corrupt practices and exploitation. Each one of them is wearing a shirt made of paper money of their respective homelands, and this reveals their grabbing of the Kenyan economy. Very corrupt. This display is to hoodwink, particularly the people who are viewing them to their ideas, whatever ideas that they will be. 
But even before looking at this one, we can have the second one, who actually should have been the first. That is Boss Kehara. Boss Kehara is also another very corrupt individual who uses the opportunity of being a boss of the champion construction company to sexually abuse or exploit Warenga. Now, here we're talking about sexual exploitation. In the beginning, we said that we're going to look at exploitation at its round level. We shall not look at exploitation only at the level of workplaces. We're going to look at it even in sexual exploitation. And the same thing when they ex ask you a question to explain the theme of exploitation. You do the same thing. Explain all forms of exploitation. So Boskara is a very corrupt individual who uses the opportunity of being a boss and wants to exploit Waringa by asking her for sex. The scandal that takes place in the office, of course, you know it. Wait a, a, a bit. At 5, I want you to type something. I'm very busy right now. And at 5, they, she doesn't see any letters to be typed, only to see him begin to hoodwink her into offering sex. Think that the floor is the best uh, the best bed they can have to have sex. Moreover, is when a representative of a particular church. Very ironical. Okay, then we can continue with the issue of exploitation. Kihahu is also another evil who indulges in corrupt practices, especially in the local elections. He bribes the voters, indulges in rigging, and wins the elections. He easily becomes the chairperson of local housing committee because of the same practice. He does not get a stand to get uh, percentages by foreign speculators in exchange for building uh, for the for building houses or building contracts. The the the, the, the fat uh, persons indulge so much in in unscrupulous uh, commercial commercialization of people's ideas and and particularly their lives because they try to suggest even uh, milking their sweat and their blood. But it is also very important for us to look at another person, and that is um, Maura, who kills Mujeru Amukirai in a car accident, but because he wants to get wealth, and that wealth is actually in the form of um, buses that he uh, is going to own, is given by uh, Kime, Kime Nderu. Now, as readers, we think that uh, by the time Mwaura reaches the cave, he and the five people that he has come with, that is uh, his passengers, Wangari, Waringa, Muturu, Gaturia, Murero, Mukirai, should be at least somewhere in a, as far as the relationship is concerned. But the fact that he accepts a bribe from Kimenderi to kill Mwaura is also, I mean, to kill Murero, Mukirai is also another aspect of corruption. And this corruption leads to the death of, of, of someone that is particularly Murero Amukirai. Very sad. We have another very corrupt police officer. Unfortunately, is the one who leading on the police guy that is supposed to arrest the thieves in the, the cave. Gakono is the superintendent of police. He is also easily overwhelmed by simply and simply a cup of tea from the foreigners as a gift. And then there are of course other few delicacies that he offers to, 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 to take. And then at the end of it all, he tends to arrest Wangari instead of arresting the thieves for whom he is called. So that is also another kind of irony, but which communicates the theme of corruption and it also talks a lot about what Kenya is at the moment. Of course there are very many other instances of corruption in the book and as a literature student you need to go on and exploit more of them. I will stop there and look at another theme of exploitation. So now looking at exploitation is another theme that is very important for us to analyze. Let us begin with the Kitutu as one of the competitors is a very big bellied person who fattens on land particularly. Now exploitation is going to be handled in the in, in in a form of generality. We're going to look at it generally. So 
uh, Gitutu as our first competitor in the cave for the crown of, of theft and robbery is proud and this relates how he has taken over very big pieces of estates and land from the white settlers, dividing them into plots and selling them at high prices to the citizens. Accepts without any hesitation, uh, saying, The land wasn't mine, and the money with which I had paid for wasn't mine, and I hadn't added anything to the land. Where did I get the two, uh, the 22,000 shillings mm -hmm. from the pockets of the people? This, so you see that on page 100. And six, he testifies having invested nothing like his cash in the plots of land that he exploits people on. And on page 113, we see his advert for the school that he is, uh, he has built a school which is not actually considered to be a school at all. And this advert is very persuasive that he even puts a, a Pian or a white lady who is deaf and does not do anything but just to sit there to attract the people. Now, we know that of course this one kind of provokes people to, to react very badly in the cave. And it is also very bad to see that people who exploit others who don't want to be exploited. Now, this confession uh, also shows a lot of grabbing of lands of the poor peasants by the black imperialists so all of these ones are actually people that we have to look at and hate in our society and then fight we have other incidences that explain the different exploitation that takes place in the novel devil across there is for example a discussion uh, on the topic uh, that the elites should exploit only the poor and the rich are exempted this is also very funny when Kihahu brags of having exploited fellow rich men, they are ironically very furious about it. The exploitation is classified only the poor as victims. This is also very ironical. For example, this is what uh, the, the rest say. I take it that we have all gathered in this cave to brag and to teach one another more efficient and cunning ways of stealing and robbing from the poor. Why the poor alone? But the man who was standing up there just now, I mean the lanky mosquito like fellow. Now, of course, because uh, this gentleman has bragged of having robbed the elites themselves, it creates a lot of confusion in that cave. So when we begin talking about uh, narrative techniques, we shall bring that on out again as our illustration. But this is the kind of exploitation which we are talking about as being too much, that the people who are not having anything are the ones who should be, uh, who should be exploited. So this is what he continued to say, son of Gathika, that is Kuto uh, Katanguru, don't you feel ashamed or aren't you embarrassed standing here in front of us bragging about this, uh, deceiving people of your class shamelessly boasting about how you have stolen from people of your class. If we start robbing, thieving, and cheating one another, how will our unity as a class take roots? That is very funny. So, the novel also exposes uh, a lot of false educators and business tycoons ready to plunder whoever they can and are not segregating the classes, if you can compare. Now, what does Gitutu, for example, say on page 116? Let us see if we can have it here. Oh, okay, it is not here. This is what Gitutu says on page 116. I had a drop of sweat. All my money came. I never stopped blacking it. I picked one fruit after another. The sweet juice would spill out the corners of my mouth before I land eat more you could you can just imagine that these are people who are ready to plunder whoever they can find and they're not even going to this to to uh, 
uh, to segregate which class they should plunder. That's the person ranking uh, Kehaho. Okay. On the continuum, we also have people like uh, the Tika, who takes up uh, another form of exploitation. It is the practice of smuggling goods and hiking up the prices of essential commodities like salt, sugar, and others that really take through this gentleman. So in, uh, this picture will actually communicate a lot about what he does, smuggling things via different borders. Now, the whole narration runs like a fictional composition, of course, especially on the side of people that are listening and that are not involved in the practices. This person, the Tika Onguji, has brought a lot of things in the country and he says that during Amini's regime, that is now the neighboring country, Uganda, is when he benefited a lot. But when he went off, he began losing. So, ironically, when the time when people in Uganda were suffering is the time when the Tika was, was harvesting a lot. Mirele Wamukilai also is another person we can look at as an exploiter and we cannot leave him out. He reveals how the manipulations that, 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 are, that should be faced in the country should only be done by the local enterprise out of the market by under selling cooking oil and other people that, uh, that are involved. So he wants to pick things that are Kenyan and sell them to people that are Kenyan. What does he mean? That they should not involve whites, they should not involve foreigners in the process of exploiting their own country. That is of course some kind of, of, of patriotism, but then how does he cater for the poor? The Wangaris and the Waringas are, are going to be taken up. So even when we have to sympathize with him, we cry. In one way or the other, he also takes a part in the exploitation of the peasants. Now, we have these other settlements that we have to analyze by different people in the cave as they compete. The very first one is uh, uh, from this gentleman, Kihaho. Kihaho Wakathika. He describes the plastic puppets of white children that he deploys in, in his school and then the white head who has to act as a thing factor to bring parents to his school. That's the kind of exploitation that we can never explain because the school is actually not authentic but offers fake individuals in the toys that will look like whites for people to come and join the school. Very corrupt and very exploitative. It too also looks further to the class when instead the tiny toys, the plots of land will be sold. Citizens will queue up to buy mere plots or trays of soil to grow food for survival. This is also another kind of exploitation that we cannot describe. He would also sell the air to the workers in the in, in the the airtight bottles. This is very fine. They are now planning to sell air for people to breathe. Then we have another one who is in the ticker, the ticker onguji, who suggests in the confront the market in the human organs. He wants for him to deal in human organs and transplants so that the elite will purchase the physical body parts and then they will never die. Very funny. Kimenderi, who is actually the worst and we learned that at the end of it all, he should be the person to take the crown, also has a plan to head all workers into barbed wire, uh, barbed wire compounds where their blood will be squeezed and dripped from them daily and sent abroad for packaging through pipes, even not people involved, and then will be brought back and sold to people expensively. And then he also suggests that uh, he, 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 he would also use education and, uh, and, and a culture and the churches or religion to make these people conditioned that what they are doing unto them is the right thing. That is very funny. Of course, when looking at 
uh, iron uh, sarcasm as a technique we shall be looking at this one as an attack on the church particularly yes okay so uh, that's what we can say about the theme the two themes exploitation and the theme of corruption and i want to encourage all people please this is the segment we've started of themes and ideas and the next time we're going to look at the themes of neocolonialism and elitism and plus any other theme that we shall find there that we shall look at today we have taken much time because we had to first introduce to cater for the senior fives I want to ask all of you to just subscribe and stay tuned so that you don't miss any video that we put up here in our channel. Stay tuned. I love you.